Hi, this is Jason, Hope you okay today. We're just looking at a tract by J.C. Ryle, Bishop of Liverpool, and I uh, hope that you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and grace, and we give you the prayers and the glory. And Father, we pray as we read your word now that you bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. May those who do not know you, may they come to know you today as their word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Christ's Invitation by J.C. Ryle Come unto me, all you that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11:28. The text which heads this paper is one which deserves to be written in letters of gold. The speaker of the invitation before you is the great and best friend that man has ever had. He is the Lord Jesus, the eternal Son of God. He, who is, he is one who is almighty, is very God of very God. He is all power in heaven and earth. In him all fullness dwells. He has the keys of death and hell. He is now the appointed mediator between God and man. And he will one day be the judge of the king of the earth. When such is one as he speaks, you may safely trust him. He who is one is among loving. He loved us so that he left behind for our sakes and laid aside for a season the glory that he had with the Father. He loved us so that he undertook to pay our debt to God and died upon the cross to make atonement for our sin. When such is one as he speaks, he deserves a hearing. When he promises a thing, you need to be afraid. You need not be afraid to trust him. I will now show you to whom the invitation before you is addressed. The Lord Jesus Christ addresses all that labor and are heavy laden. The expression is deeply comforting and instructive. It is wide, sweeping and comprehensive. It, is, uh, it describes the case of millions in every part of the world. Where are the laboring and heavy laden? They are everywhere. They are a multitude that man can scarcely number. They are to be found in every climate, in every country under the sun. I will now show you that the Lord Jesus Christ asks you to do. Three words make up the sum and substance of the invitation which he sends you today. If you are laboring and heavy laden, says Jesus, come unto me. Come to Christ is coming to him with your heart by simple faith. Believing on Christ is coming to him and coming to Christ is believing. It is the act of the soul which takes place within a man, feeling his own sins and despairing of all other hope, commits himself to Christ for salvation, ventures on him, trusts him, and casts himself wholly on him. When a man turns to Christ, empty that he may be filled, sick, sick that he may be healed, hungry that he may be satisfied, thirsty that he may be refreshed, needy that he may be enriched, dying that he may have life, lost that he may be saved, guilty that he may be pardoned, sin defiled that he may be cleansed, confessing that Christ alone can supply his need, he comes to Christ. It is the empty soul's venture on a full saviour, it is the drowning man's grasp on the hand held out to help him, it is the sick man's reception of a healing medicine. This and nothing more than this is coming to Christ. Beware of mistakes as to this matter of coming to Christ. Do not stop short in any halfway house. Do not allow the devil and the world to cheat you out of eternal life. Do not suppose that you will ever get any good from Christ unless you go straight, direct, thoroughly and entirely to Christ himself. I will now show you what the Lord Jesus Christ promises to give. Come unto me, he says, and I will give you rest. And rest is one of the principal offers which the gospel makes to man. Come to me, says the world, and I will give you riches and pleasure. Come with me, says the devil, and I will give you greatness and power and wisdom. Come unto me, says the Lord Jesus Christ, and I will give you rest. The rest that Christ gives is an inward and spiritual thing. It is the rest of the heart, rest of conscience, rest of mind, rest of affection, rest of will. It is rest from a comfortable sense of sins being all forgiven and guilt put away. Rest such as this the Lord Jesus gives those who come to him by showing them his own finished work on the cross, by clothing them in his own perfect righteousness and washing them in his own precious blood. When a man begins to see that the Son of God actually died for his sins, his soul is to taste something of an inward quiet and peace. There is only one way road to rest of soul. Let that never be forgotten. There is only one way to the Father, Jesus Christ, one door into heaven, Jesus Christ, and one path to to heart peace Jesus Christ come to him by faith and pour out your heart before him in prayer tell him the whole story of your life and ask him to receive you cry to him as the penitent thief did and when he saw him on the cross say to him Lord save me also Lord remember me come come to Christ
we want to give your heart to Jesus today what you've got to do is confess your sin and say Lord forgive me and please come into my life I give you my life today and at that point the Lord will hear your prayer and you will be a child of God let's come before the Lord Lord for those who do not know you we pray that they would acknowledge their sin and father we pray that they would come to know you as their Lord and Savior bless them Lord and may they find you today Lord open their hearts to the gospel and may they come to trust in you by the power of your Holy Spirit in Jesus name Amen